I'm originally from Australia, from Melbourne, Australia, and uh, Hong Kong now is very much my home. Really enjoy living here. I'm in support of the China national security legislation for Hong Kong. If we look at the last uh, year and a half or so in Hong Kong, uh, it's, it's been really disastrous. I think there's been uh, um, a peaceful protest and I think peaceful protest is okay. Uh, but when it moves from peaceful protest into then violence, well then you're talking about two very different things there. And then when violence turns into terrorist-like activity, when you're bra breaking public property or in some cases you're, for example, lighting a person on fire, or in some cases where you're throwing a brick at a person that hits an innocent person in the head and, and kills them, or when you're vandalising property, or when you're uh, obstructing people. There was a time where at the airport they were obstructing innocent people from travelling. These people are not really having anything to do with this call to arms around so-called word, words like freedom and words like democracy. It's moved way past that. And so from what I can see, we need to restore some civility. We need to restore some peace and some order, which is fundamentally what makes Hong Kong such an amazing city. It's one of the, and has always been one of the safest cities in the world for anyone. Um, you can pretty much walk in anywhere in Hong Kong and feel completely safe, both as a, as a man and, and as a woman and independent of age. And when that started to change and when people's personal feelings about the safety in Hong Kong started to change, well, then I think it was that the, the, the central government uh, of China had every single right to step up and look at it and say, well, if there's unrest of that kind in one of the cities that's part of mainland China, a, as it would be in any other city in mainland China, uh, I think it's the right time uh, to intervene. And in fact, I think, it's, I think we've waited too long, but I think it's good that we're going to start seeing that happen and we'll, we will restore some security and peace and civility to Hong Kong so people can get on and start enjoying their life again because I think it's been very stressful and it's been a, a very anxious time for a lot of people. Uh, the, first, the first way I would respond is what freedoms do they think that they don't have now? I think Hong, Hong Kong is one of the freest places on the planet. So they're claiming that their freedoms will be removed or they don't have freedoms now. What, what freedoms are they referring to? I would like to understand a, a little bit more. The second way I'd re I would respond is that I think there's a lot of misconceptions and misunderstandings about mainland China that are historically based and I think a lot of people apply a negative bias towards China this idea that that the central government or the Chinese government want to just ruin things or destroy things in Hong Kong on some level I, I understand where that fear might come from historically but I think it's misplaced so the way I approach it is I approach it with an open heart I approach it with this great opportunity uh, for China uh, to help here. Um, national security is only one part of where China can help. If you actually look across the border, you look at what's happening in the Greater Bay Area, we're already s starting to see the beginnings of what's possible. But what I don't understand is an unwillingness to be open about what the possibilities could really be. I think predominantly Hong Kong Chinese and Chinese in general are very rational people. I think once they see that things will return to a secure and a peaceful state in Hong Kong and uh, hopefully as the pandemic uh, recedes and things improve, tourists start re returning to Hong Kong, business starts improving in Hong Kong. Um, 
I, I think people will start to enjoy it all over again and, and, and forget. Hong Kong can be anything that it wants to be. Hong Kong is agile, geographically in one of the best places in the world. It's got the support of China. Uh, there is uh, a lot of um, money running through Hong Kong. There's a lot of intellectual capital in Hong Kong. Uh, I think we have an opportunity to improve some creative aspects of Hong Kong, but that's not impossible. So I think if we can, if we can grow our frame, if we can grow our perspective and widen that, and we can begin to dig into the potential that's already in Hong Kong and the potential that's already in China and start to intersect that together some more, the possibilities are endless for Hong Kong. I, so I'm very positive. I've always been very positive uh, for Hong Kong. I arrived in Hong Kong about 1998, 99. It was an economic downturn. And I, w I couldn't believe it was an economic downturn when I arrived in Hong Kong because all I saw was opportunity. And even with the troubles over the last year and a half, Hong Kong locals, Hong Kong Chinese are very hard working. I think what we need to do is harness all of our energies into a direction that can help Hong Kong and also help China be prosperous in a local setting and in an international setting.